have worked on some shows that I'm a massive fan of, American Gods, Runaways, two of uh, two shows that stand out to me. And uh, there's a little show at the moment that's uh, out called Winning Time on HBO. Yeah. Um, could you tell us a little bit about Winning Time and how you became um, involved with the project? Uh, yeah. Um, Adam McKay and HBO, well, uh, I got to go all the way back to the beginning, I guess. Jim Hecht, yeah. uh, one of our executive producers, um, was in love with the book Showtime by Jeff Perlman. Um, he got that book to Adam McKay, uh, who got that to, to option rights and all of that stuff to HBO. HBO decided they were interested in doing a miniseries about it. They hired Max Bornstein to write the pilot. Max and I have been writing together for about 10 years. He reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to join on and, and all of that. And sort of that's how I got involved via Max. And and like, uh, were you were you involved at all? You, I, I believe I'm right in, th in thinking that you did help write a little on the show. Um, yeah, I'm yeah, credited with nine of ten episodes. Yeah, and and were you also involved in in like the casting process? Because the some the of cast, it, yeah. yeah, the cast for this show is is pretty is pretty incredible. You've got John C. Riley, you've got Gabby Hoffman, Jason Clark, some really big names. So, what was it like working with uh, some of them? Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, anytime you have the best of the best interpreting your thoughts and ideas, and um, being able to work with them every day is certainly um, a great experience. Um, but Francine Maisler, our casting director, is primarily responsible for um, getting the bulk of those folks on board. Um, Max and myself weighed in a lot on a lot of pieces, you know, um, yeah. Max more so in the beginning before I came on board. But um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just an honor to be working with such great folks. And you mentioned before that it's a mini series, but are you thinking of doing anything else in this? No, it's not area? a mini series anymore. Oh, it's a series. Yeah, so yeah. we're writing season two right now. Oh, awesome! I was going to ask you about season two. <laughs> that was the question I had. So, so it's 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 happening basically. Yeah, we're writing it right now. That's really cool. Um, when when I look at the uh, your IMDb page, um, I really get the sense that your story is kind of like a Hollywood success story, because you started off as a, as literally, I think a PA. Is that, yeah. is that right? Yeah. And now you're producing some of these massive HBO shows. And like, how, can you give us a little explanation as to how that happened? And yeah, I mean, um, you know, I'm not from Los Angeles. I never had any real um, connections or family or you know any bridges to get from where. Um, where I was to where I am. I wasn't an exceptional student. I didn't, um, there was nothing about me that was special. Uh, I, I think I could say pretty safely. And, you know, I always had a thing, a relationship with words and a way of telling stories and something about my personality sparked to that. But I was in Maryland, which is as far from California yeah. and Hollywood as you could possibly be. And so I had to take the long route, you know, I, I, Part of being a production assistant and assistant director and all the other jobs that I had was really learning what the business was, um, the psychology of it, um, how you make movies, how you make TV shows, not just the schooling of it, but actually the hands on approach to it. So to be able to have a ringside seat to that and play a small role in a lot of different projects really sort of gave me an education that today when I'm producing or putting a script together. I can really speak to um, what can and can't be done. It's like when you don't know, you can you write anything. You can, it's a piece of paper and a pencil. You can write anything in a world, but that doesn't mean that the thing that you're writing is producible. Yeah. So being able to um, to take whatever experience and knowledge that I learned from those ten years of production certainly has helped me on the other end of this. Well, that, that's really cool because we, we've got a lot of people that um, watch and read small screen that are very much interested in getting into writing stuff. A lot of writers. I'm a writer myself. Mm -hmm. And um, when like your your career is like incredibly diverse, you've got TV shows, you've got some movies, then you've also got comic books. Mm -hmm. And um, when James told me that we were going to get to interview, I was like, oh, this is 
your name's attached to the Lando uh, comic book series, which is, yeah, I wrote uh, that series. Yeah, yeah, which is like a really a, a massive favorite of mine. So, is is that something? Is is that keeping? Is there something about keeping it fresh to you that help? That is why you want to do all of these different things. Uh, is that something in your career that you've uh, actually actively seeked out? Um, I've always loved everything that I'm doing. Like um, I've, uh, comics, comic books were the first thing I loved in life that mm -hmm. I remember. Like my first love when I was a kid, kid, like four or five years old. My mother used to take me to the public library and I used to read comic books. And so the weird thing about comics that was a blessing to me was they sort of evolved as I got older. Like you went from the simple funny book style comic books to um, Alan Moore and Neil Gaiman and, you know, these dense literature like prosy books that um, yeah. were really geared more for adults uh, than they were kids. And this was happening as I was becoming an adult. So I just stuck with comics along the way. And now they're sort of um, almost like advertisements for movies in a way. Um, yeah. And still not really for kids. And they cost so much that it's tough for a kid to really jump in when they were like 20 cents back when I was a kid. And now they're like four bucks at the minimum. Yeah. So, um, you know, when it came to comics, that was a no brainer. When I was working on Runaways, uh, they liked what I was doing. I made it clear that I love comics and they sort of gave me an assignment. I had no idea what the hell I was doing, but it took two or three series to sort of figure it out. And once I got my legs under me, um, it became comfortable. But, you know, if you go through the things that are different, be it sitcoms, I grew up on Norman Lear comedies and mm. loved those. So sitcoms were a no brainer. The boondocks sort of um, yeah. spoke to my interest in politics and race and culture and a bunch of other things. Um, and being able to break boundaries because up until that point, I'd only worked on network shows that yeah. had very strict boundaries. Whereas the boondocks, we could almost in the beginning say anything it felt like. Um, and then later on, you know, I wanted to be in the drama. That was sort of my love in the beginning. So being able to work on stuff like American Gods or Runaways spoke to my comic book fantasy genre type um, appreciation. Um, and stuff like Wu-Tang and American Saga and, um, you know, Winning Time sort of go with, walk with my interest in human beings and, you know, how we come together to achieve a thing. You know, yeah. Wu-Tang is kind of like a team. It's a bunch of them. And um, winning time is a team. So um, all of this at the end of the day is story. I don't really look at them as different when people say, oh, you've done comedy, you've done drama, you've done sitcom, you've done all these different things. Really, to me, it's all the same thing. It's all story. And it's all just sort of a blessing to be able to tell different types of stories. Because um, yeah. I'm interested in a bunch of different things. There is no one thing uh, I'm interested in. I mean, like... Small screen, one of the things that we're really into is, is comic books, which is why we've asked you so many questions about it. But um, I suppose one, one question um, I, I wanted to put past you was, um, have, you, have you got a hankering to go back into that, into that kind of um, live action comic book realm? You know, you did Runaways, you did American Gods, you started oh, yeah. off working on Blade as well. So I was wondering. Yeah, for my own stuff, certainly. Um, yeah. I, you know, the adaptations of Philadelphia that are uh, option right now and the other books that I do, I would love to be able to bring them to life. Um, that's basically it at this point. I doubt that yeah. I would ever like staff on a show. Um, you never know. Um, the right thing came along. But um, as far as creating something, I'm sort of in that space right now trying to bring things to life. So what are you working on right now? Um, beyond winning time? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to look at my board. <laughs> I have uh, my Kilda my Philadelphia adaptation. Um, that's optioned by Levantine. I have a Tiger Woods miniseries. Um, I have uh, a miniseries Fox Lake that uh, Max Borenstein and I sold to HBO. Um, I have a pilot things that make white people uncomfortable that. Um, <laughs> Is, uh, okay, is that bad. HBO Max? Uh, I have two biopics, uh, one at Universal, 
Um, another one that we haven't set up yet. I have a monster movie at uh, New Regency. And I have a movie right around Shining with Lakeith Stanfield and Jonah Hill at Netflix. Um, and about 10 comic books a month that um, I write. So there you go. You're a busy man. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> The, the one I saw was uh, uh, Right Around Shining, which yeah. uh, sounds like a really, really interesting um, project. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield, um, Academy Award nominated actor, came to me. Uh, came, well, he came to Jonah Hill with an idea. I know Jonah. He directed one of uh, our episodes of, um, of uh, Winning Time. And... Um, came to Jonah with an idea. Jonah felt like I would be the right writer to bring it to life. And um, we all had a meeting and decided I was the guy and pitched it to Netflix and they liked it. It's basically about a basketball player who, uh, a pro basketball player that uh, gets a DUI and has to hire a chauffeur. He hires um, a Jonah Hill-like character, hoping it's Jonah. Um, but the guy's a little bit off and he goes crazy and he tries to kill the basketball player. So that's sort of what it is. That sounds perfect for Jonah Hill. <laughs> that I think character. so. Yeah. We'll see how we'll see how the script comes out. But yeah. Oh, that's that's awesome. Um, what's what's it like uh, working? Like you 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 work with a lot of studios. A lot of your stuff has recently has been with HBO. But you're talking about working with Netflix. Well, what what's the the uh, experience like working with different networks? Are there ones that you prefer working with or? Um, no, it, it's never really the net. It's really never the network as much as it is the people at the network. Okay. Um, you have good people, and you know you have good people everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really finding the right chemistry between human beings. To certainly in a creative space, people who see your vision or people who appreciate what you do and understand you from a creative space and also from a personal space where your personalities click and makes it easier to. Um, deal when things aren't 100 percent perfect which very yeah. rarely they are um so it's really more about the people at those places than it is about the places themselves that's cool because uh, i think i read somewhere that you recently signed a, a pretty big deal with hbo is, is that yeah is that i had a two-year deal and i just extended it for three more years so um i'll be at hbo for a minute well congratulations um thank you um i think where the james was asking me about like uh, to to bring it back to winning time mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to know what what really drew you to that project um it was when i sort of fell in love with the game of basketball beyond just a kid on the playground um right during that period um i watched a lot of those games and you really in real time mm -hmm. and I was a huge Dr. J fan as a kid and uh, 76ers were my team. So being able to tell the story of the guys who thwarted their um, ability to get an NBA championship was sort of fun. So, you know, sentiment, I understood the time, I understood the, the story itself, but I also understood the time that it was set in and being able to speak to a lot of different subjects about race and culture and, you know, the, the nature of the times was sort yeah. of um, it's hard to pass on something like that. That's on a, as a, I mean, my, my knowledge of basketball being half English, half French is, is uh, not, not massive, but the thing is winning time has really brought me into it. Cool. Um, which is something actually I wanted to tell you before coming on. It's like, it's actually got me interested in basketball, I, I'm following it now. I used to follow it back when uh, there was one French player that used to play for San Antonio Spurs, mm -hmm. uh, which was Tony Parker. Tony Parker, yeah, yeah. That was he was the only the, the, at the time the only one that people at my school ever cared about. <laughs> That's just because he's French. Um, yes. But uh, we're being like huge Marvel and DC heads uh, here at Small Screen, um, and knowing that you've got a, a pretty, I think, a pretty extensive knowledge. In comic books, is there is there a particular Marvel or DC comic that you'd love to see be brought to live action, like in the MCU or the DC universe? Um, Swamp Thing has always been. I know uh, they, they did a short run. Um, yeah, they on did the yeah. DC universe thing, um, but they canceled it after the pilot. Um, I would love to see a proper. I know Guillermo del Toro had a Justice League Dark movie he was doing, and Swamp yeah. Thing and Constantine and all of those guys were part of it. Um, I sort of yearn for that. 
Um, I've always loved Swamp Thing. He's my favorite character. Uh, most of the characters in the, the Marvel Universe, I've either... I'm getting an opportunity to write their books. I'm doing a Luke Cage book coming up soon. That's cool. And um, some other things. I did a Falcon book. Um, I've been in the Star Wars place. I got a, Land a Mandalorian book coming up soon. Um, so it's always... Um, it's always fun to play in that space. It's it's just as fun to make your own though. As yeah. Well. So yeah. without the boundaries of the canon that they're yeah. all attached to, that's the stuff that makes it a little bit more difficult because you have to stay within boundaries, um, which is cool, you know. And sometimes they let certain folks break those boundaries and create, you know, different ideas. I haven't evolved to that place yet, but maybe <laughs> one day I will. Well, that's, that's the question I was going to ask. Like, is it is it something that you have to really work out, especially in the the Star Wars universe? I can imagine them being very um, cautious about where mm -hmm. you're going, uh, especially mm -hmm. with the comic books. Is it, do you ever talk to like Paolo Hidalgo or people like that about story and stuff? Um, not really. I mean, no. I am. <coughs> I mean, Lucasfilm and and Marvel sort of give you set the parameters early okay. in. And your pitch, you know, when you pitch something to them, they tell you what you can and can't do. And as you're writing a script, you figure out what you can and can't do. Mm. And throughout the execution of it, you're constantly being reminded of what you can and can't do. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So, you know, you really don't have to talk to anybody. Um, you pitch your idea and you're off to the races. But every once in a while, somebody's going to grab the back of your shirt and say, hey, you can't go that fast. You got to move <laughs> over here. You got to go to the right or the left. I can I can imagine it being quite um, tricky sometimes in those situations where you've got an idea and you really want to push it, but it's just not happening. They're not they're not letting you go there. Yeah, but if you're worth your salt, you can always come up with another idea. So yeah, exactly. You know, it's like you get anytime you get married to a particular idea, eh, it's always dangerous anyway. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, that that's all my questions um, for you. It's been really lovely talking to you. Thank you, uh, and um, I'm really looking forward to because the the final episodes of Winning Time um, because I'm I'm in Europe they're mm -hmm. still not available here at oh. the moment so uh, so I'm really looking forward to to watching the end the the end of it I won't and, give it away I promise <laughs> and and I'm really looking forward to all your ridiculous amounts of projects coming out I hope you like. <laughs> It's so many. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us, for taking the time oh, to speak to us. You're very welcome. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Take it easy. Bye-bye.